Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be focusing on the educational sector, and more specifically higher education. This is in light of the Egyptian University's research, scientific research centers and international publishing achieving and uh, making a great leap in the world rankings. We're going to be looking at this file tonight, but before we start doing that, let's check out some of the stories making the news today. And we'll start off with uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi, who held a meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and Minister of Finance, Maït, Deputy Minister of Finance and Financial for Financial Policies, Ahmed Kojak, and Deputy Minister of Finance at the Public Treasury, Dr. Iheb Aisha. Presidential spokesman Bassem Radi said the meeting addressed the financial performance indicators, the activity of the customs and tax sectors at the Ministry of Finance. The financial performance for the first half of the fiscal year 2022-23 was reviewed during the meeting, which affirmed the state's ability to cope with international economic variables, absorb shocks, maintain the safe track of the general budget, provide all states' needs and increasing allocations for government investments and provision of all essential commodities and necessities. The meeting also tackled the implementation of the National Economic Reform Programme, which is supported by the International Monetary Fund. This comes as the government seeks to achieve all targeted reforms, notably the recent approval of the protection of competition and the prevention of practices monopoly, and the ratification of the state property policy document, which is aimed at maximizing the role played by the private sector in the economic activity. The meeting also discussed the finance ministry's ongoing projects, especially in the tax and customs sector, in addition to achievements of tax dispute termination committees and tax appeal committees, with the head of state directing to settle all tax files. The President also directed to expedite the export of all goods delivered to ports, as well as the completion of all goods procedures related to the governance of the customs clearance system. President Abdel Fattah Hassisi also followed uh, today a development plan to promote the Giza Zoo and gave his directives to develop the zoo in line with the global view and enhance its historical and archaeological value as one of the finest zoos in the world. This comes within the framework of the Giza Zoo's introduction on the basis of international environmental standards and be an inspiration to welcome visiting citizens from different parts of the country. President Tisisi gave his instructions during his meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli, Minister of Finance Mohamed Maid. Minister of Agriculture and Land Reclamation, Sayyid Qusayr, and Minister of State for Military Production, Mohammed Salah Eddin. Presidential spokesman Bassam Radi said President Sisi directed to upgrade the zoo's efficiency and preserve its archaeological and historical buildings, as well as expanding green and entertaining areas, as well as commercial regions inside the zoo, plus plans to link the Giza Zoo with Al Omran Garden. The President called on the private sector to participate in implementing the development plan of the zoo as well as the management and operation work of the zoo. <clears throat> and Egypt has expressed regret over storming Al-Aqsa Mosque by Israeli National Security Minister Itamar ben Gvirz and extremist elements under the protection of Israeli forces. A statement issued by the Foreign Ministry on Tuesday said that Egypt rejects any unilateral measures that run counter to the legal status of the holy places in Jerusalem. The statement warned of the negative consequences of the incursion in the security and stability of the occupied land and the Arab region. It also called all partners to exercise self-restraint, shoulder responsibility and refrain from any measures that would inflame the situation.
These were some of the stories making the news today, but now turning our attention to tonight's topic, the Egyptian University and Research Centers have advanced in the global ranking of 2022. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. Egyptian University Research Centers advance in the global rankings in 2022. Egypt has witnessed remarkable progress in the classification of its research centers and organizations globally compared to last year. In addition to the entry of research centers that were not in CIMAGO classification last year, According to the report issued by the CIMAGO Authority for the year 2022 regarding the classification of research institutions worldwide, that included universities, centers and agencies, Egypt ranked 26 in the world in the field of international publishing for the among 232 countries in top 11.2% of the list of the world countries for the year 2021. According to a statement from the Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research, Ayman Ashur, Egyptian universities and research centers have made remarkable advancement in international rankings in 2022. In his statement, Minister Ashur said that 36 Egyptian universities were listed on the 2022 Times Higher Education impact rankings up from 31 in 2021. 70 Egyptian universities and research centers were included in the CIMAGO classification for the year 2022, indicating that they came in centers from 456 to 773 out of a total of 8,084 university and research institutions included in the classification. The Egyptian research centers occupy 18% of the total Arab university and research institutions in the classification, and they occupy 22% of the total African university and research institutions in this classification. The list ranks 1,406 universities from 106 countries for their commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as DGs. Also, 26 Egyptian public and private universities are included in the British Times Higher Education classification of the Global Higher Education Institutions for 2023. Moreover, 19 Egyptian universities are ranked in the U.S. News Global classification for 2022-2023 among the best 2,000 universities in the world. This statement also noted that 24 Egyptian universities are included in Shanghai Chinese general classification for academic specializations in 2022, compared to only five in 2020. Furthermore, 42 Egyptian universities are listed in the Spanish CIMAGO classification for the year 2022, compared to 35 universities in 2021. Meanwhile, the statement referred to the inclusion of seven Egyptian universities in the Shanghai Chinese general classification compared to six in 2021. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Dr. Nadia Zakheri, the former Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us this You're evening. You're welcome. It's my pleasure to be with you today. It's a pleasure, Your Excellency. Thank you. First of all, now, we're talking about how many Egyptian universities are being included in international rankings very high rankings in yes. terms of North Africa, the Middle East, and globally as well. Now, we've seen a lot of attention and efforts being exerted and directed for uh, the educational sector, especially higher education with many universities, with many different specializations, um, ICT, uh, artificial intelligence, technical education, and everything. Now, how, how come we 
we have achieved uh, a progress in our world ranking. I mean, we were 28th in terms of international publication research centers. Uh, now we're 26th. And uh, you just mentioned to me that before that we were even in our 30s. Yes. So how come we have achieved this sort of progress in, in such a short period of time? Okay, let me first say that the 26th means we are in the first 15% worldwide. Mm -hmm. And this is a very good ranking. This includes, uh, this is concerned with the international publication of the scientific papers. But this is not the only KPI that ranks the scientific research. But let me talk about this parameter, which mm -hmm. is the scientific publication. What makes us uh, with uh, this um, elevation, what mm -hmm. led to this elevation? Because uh, since about 12 or 15 years, uh, it was said that anyone who will uh, publish a paper in an international journal will take uh, an incentive, which is uh, proportional to the impact factor of the journal. Mm -hmm. So all of us want yes. the incentives, of yes. course. Uh, another thing is that when we apply to awards, we have to apply with these international papers, and this gives us what is known as H-index. Whenever I publish in an international journal, my H-index is better. Mm -hmm. So all of us want to have uh, uh, a high H-index. Uh, yes. Uh, another thing that our laboratories has been much more better equipped than before. Uh, our scientists are thinking globally. They are not thinking only of what uh, we used to do to repeat the researches and so on and read what happened outside and then repeat the same in Egypt. Mm -hmm. No, we are thinking out of the box now. Mm -hmm. All these factors made our uh, rank much more better than before. Yes. Well, then what is the reason? I mean, why didn't we work on publishing it internationally in international jo uh, journals and getting um, uh, the proper international accreditation for it? Uh, let me say that we have international journals like the international uh, journal which is called JAR. It is a national journal for the Cairo University. It is Journal of Advanced Research and it is in Cairo University. It has a very high rank now. It is 12.6, and 12.6 is a very high rank. Mm -hmm. So we have national um, journals, but if we, uh, we do not publish these journals worldwide, the world will not know what we are doing in Egypt. Mm -hmm. This is the benefit of uh, international journals. They take us as a reference. As we take mm -hmm. them as a reference, they take us as a reference. But if I, uh, I'm only publishing in national journals, which are not um, dis distributed worldwide, nobody will know what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And our scientific rank will not be elevated. Yes. Well, now we have been elevated in the world rankings. How will this reflect on our research uh, centers, on our laboratories, on our Egyptian universities? How can it benefit our higher education and scientific research uh, sector and ministry for Egypt? Okay, let me go to the first question. I told you it's not scientific publication, which is the only KPI mm -hmm. that ranks our education or our scientific research. So if I am elevated in the rank, I can attract people from abroad to work here. Mm -hmm. or pupils to come and study in our universities. If I'm not at a high rank, nobody will come. Am I repelling the people to go outside or I'm attracting the people to come to Egypt? So mm -hmm. if I'm good in the rank, if, I'm, if I have a good uh, uh, scientific research, if I have good education, I will attract the people to come and study in our universities as well as attracting scientists to come and work here mm -hmm. but we are we were for the past time we were repelling mm -hmm. our scientists like Dr. Zouel and others uh, some of them return back to make something in Egypt like Dr. Zouel and Dr. Magdi Aoub and others stay outside yes. uh, physician takes their uh, bachelor degree and they go outside so mm -hmm. this is not good we are trying to attract the people and to let our uh, population have confidence in our education and stay here and 
they are learned here and everything and then they go outside this is very bad yes well then you've touched upon a very important issue which is attracting uh, foreign or international researchers and students coming to the Egyptian universities but this can also work the other way I mean when Egyptian universities and research centers have their international uh, recognition and uh, publication distributed worldwide. Maybe other universities and other educational institutions would try and attract those Egyptian researchers and Egyptian students and later on graduates to go abroad and start working and and benefit from the uh, Egyptian experience. Yes. So how can we find a balance to make sure the Egyptian researchers and students uh, of our higher education and our universities stay in Egypt and benefit our country and make sure that they don't find it all uh, attractive or easier to just go abroad and work and, and, uh, and benefit other countries. You're 100% right, but it's very important to exchange technology between Egypt and other countries. Mm -hmm. It's not good to let our people go outside and don't return back. Mm -hmm. What I need is uh, that they return back with new technology, with new knowledge, and we give the other countries our knowledge and so on. Uh, scientific research is a sort of uh, collaboration between countries. Mm -hmm. We are. We have many collaborations, mainly with all the world. All the world, not only America or uh, the Europe countries, or so on. We have collaboration with Africa, mm -hmm. and so they benefit from our knowledge, because Egypt is number two in Africa. Maybe South Africa is better than us in scientific research. We are number two. So other countries look to us as a very high. Uh, uh, ranking uh, country in scientific research. Mm -hmm. They want to come and study here, they want to come and make scientific research here. Going back to their countries, we are proud of that, that they come and study here and then they go back and they say that they have good laboratories, they have good scientific research, they have good edu education. That's what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, having international recognition is great. Um, going up in the world rankings is amazing and this is a, a great testament for the Egyptian universities and the Egyptian students and researchers. But what about the second step after having this sort of recognition? How can we make sure that these uh, researchers and these publications are translated and being implemented on the ground so that I mean, it, it works on, on, on the medical, medical level, societal level, economic level, uh, engineering uh, theories, everything. How can we make sure to, of, to benefit and get the, the, the highest benefit and this from is the this aim. research? Yes. Yes. This is the aim of scientific research is mm -hmm. that applying this research. Uh, our aim is not making research and putting it beside us and publishing it and taking mm -hmm. a good edge index or so on. You know a scientist when his scientific research is applied, he will be very proud of that. Yes, Better of than having any edge index. Mm -hmm. um, we are not so good in innovation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though we are the best in maybe in Africa or in uh, the Middle in Africa, East, the Middle East or yeah. because the Middle mm -hmm. East and Africa uh, doesn't have this high innovative index. Mm -hmm. uh, applying the research is the most important thing. If you apply the research, we will, we will make uh, what is known as economy based on scientific research. Mm -hmm. This economy will let us export and not import everything. Mm -hmm. And the problem of the dollar would have been solved yes. if, we, if we export our, uh, our materials. We export our raw materials without adding to it any um, value. Any value, exactly. Mm -hmm. But with innovation, we add value for this raw material and it will be in a high price and we can get other uh, dollars from abroad or, and, or even we can we don't need to import everything mm -hmm. we can do the, our medication our uh, uh, industri in, in industry or whatever we need mm -hmm. 
Well, what's stopping us from applying these theories and these researchers and the innovation, applying it on the ground, adding uh, value to any sort of product or yeah. service as a result of these researchers? Is it a question of financing? Is it a question of uh, bureaucracy? Is it a question of having a clear sort of path for the researchers and innovators to apply their own uh, researches and experiments? It's, the ma it's a problem that those who apply this research don't believe in Egyptian technology. Mm -hmm. They believe in, uh, in the technology of America or of Europe and they take it as, as for granted, I will make this in my industry. Mm -hmm. But if they see that uh, certain researches are uh, very good to be applied and they can add value to their industry, they will apply it. The problem is that uh, the relation between those who apply the research and those who make the research is not so good. But if we make a sort of exhibition for our innovation, mm -hmm. sometimes some of these innovations are applied. Mm -hmm. And I know some uh, businessmen who took from this innovation and they confess that because we have made benefit of these innovations, our industry is very good now and our product is much more better mm -hmm. than before. Mm -hmm. So is it a question of having the private sector playing a bigger role or it, does it also depend on the public sector and the governmental sector to try and uh, really adopt and nurture these innovations to be applied within our own industry and in our it's own economy? It's a triangle. The researcher mm -hmm. must know what the businessman or the government need mm -hmm. and make his researches according to his needs not making the research because I read something in the journal so I will uh, apply this and will see if this is right or this is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is not a good scientific research. But uh, a demand-based research is the best research to be done. If I will make a demand-based research, the businessman or those who apply, the government or whatever, will find that this research is good to be applied. Mm -hmm. It will enhance my product. So he will take it. Maybe even he will fund this research to take the result of this research and benefit from it after that. Mm -hmm. So it's a sort of, of a, a collaboration between both sides. Yes. Dr. Zaghari, now over the past few years we've seen uh, the establishment and inauguration of many different universities, new universities different parts of Egypt, different governorates and the new cities and universities that are specialized in certain areas. I mean, we've seen universities specif uh, I mean, specialize in technology, in uh, information communication technology, in artificial intelligence, in technical education. Because the market needs a lot of really uh, new, up-to-date, high technology that is updated year in, year out, if not even month in, yes. month out. So how would you assess this sort of movement of really starting off uh, this educational process in, in line with the, the progress and the development of the times? And when would we see and really notice the difference and the fruit, bear the fruit, of these universities with the students being administered in it? Of course it's wonderful to make these advances in the, uh, or to know what the market needs mm -hmm. because the market needs many novel uh, opportunities, many novel knowledge yes. for those who work in the field. Uh, even the fields that we know like medicine, medicine needs these new informational technologies, these new equipments and these new robots engineering of course needs more yes. and more information technology and so on so it's very good that all the uh, new universities they have these new departments mm -hmm. to serve the market and the future of Egypt and the future of the world not only Egypt yes. and we have to compete with other countries because our students they don't work in Egypt only mm -hmm. they work all over the world so if they are not well educated in these special subjects 
they will not compete with other uh, if for example they want to work in america mm -hmm. how can they compete with other countries if we don't have this new knowledge here in egypt mm -hmm. so it's very good not to repeat the departments but to make novel and think out of the box yes well with the start and the beginning of everything uh, you face a lot of challenges and maybe some obstacles that you need to overcome now with the establishment of all these new universities with all these uh, different specializations what sort of challenge do you feel these universities will face and maybe the students might face in um, uh, an ever-changing and ever-developing sort of world of technology and advancement let me say the first challenge is the staff that mm -hmm. teach the students because not all the staff is very well qualified especially in these novel uh, sciences no novel studies. sciences yes mm -hmm. so we don't have enough staff to teach these novel sciences because many uh, of the staff still teach with the old way mm -hmm. uh, the other challenge is what does the market need? The mar we don't know the market needs what. We have to study the market very well and then to make the departments according to the demand of the market. Mm -hmm. What will the future be? The future is changing very, very quickly. When I'm talking with you now, something is changed in the yes. science. Mm -hmm. So the, it is changing very quickly. Can I, uh, can I change myself? with the changes worldwide, this is a very great challenge. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zakheri, I mean, you were the Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm the Minister, the minister of Scientific Research. Uh, of scientific only. Research. Yes, when I was a minister, yes. there were two ministries. Well, so you know exactly firsthand some of the biggest um, goals and the biggest obstacles. Now, in this ever-changing and I mean it, it is always changing as you've mentioned now what do you feel we need to really develop our scientific research you've mentioned that maybe our technology or the implementation of our research and innovation is not really backed by the belief of the students and the researchers so how can we actually get the students to start believing in investing their research and their education in Egypt and in the Egyptian technology and, and what else, what other goals do we need to develop our scientific research? Let me say that they believe in that. Mm -hmm. They believe that their researchers must lead to innovation and lead to application and lead to companies and to industries. Mm -hmm. They believe that, but it, it is a very tedious way. Mm -hmm. um, a scientist doesn't have uh, the ability to market his research. So now in the universities there is a subject for marketing the researches. Mm -hmm. I'm proud and I'm happy for that. But we didn't give it long ago. So all the researchers like myself, yes. I cannot market my, uh, mm -hmm. my research, mm -hmm. especially in the field of medicine. Marketing the research in the field of medicine needs many clinical trials with, which take from 15 to 25 years. Mm -hmm. So it is very tedious. If, if that's why the drugs or the medications are very expensive. It's yes. not only because they uh, need to take money. It's because they took a long time to invent a certain medication and to apply it. Mm -hmm. And to know that it doesn't have a side effect or, or it has a side effect but its benefit is more than the side effect. Uh, so this is the challenge that scientist is talking in a mind with the mind of scientist who is working the laboratory and the businessman is talking with the mind of a businessman who wants money and to want he wants the turn uh, on of his money as quickly as he can mm -hmm. so this is a problem uh, in Egypt we don't have this uh, innovation like maybe the states Europe and and the China and Japan and so on they have this talent and they have this um, they, they can market their, their researches very well we are starting our way yes that's why we are the first in the Middle East and in the Arabic and the African countries mm -hmm. but 
we need much, much more than that. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do need uh, a lot more than what has already been achieved. And it started off with the development of the Egyptian universities and the uh, scientific research set centers getting international rankings and recognition. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. Egyptian research centers are showing strength in regional rankings, as nine Egyptian research institutions are among the 20 best scoring institutions in the region. According to the Spanish research organization, Clamago Mena Region Research Center rankings, a total of 89 Egyptian research centers were included in the S. Clamago's first annual Mena Region research rankings. More than any other country, which assessed 391 institutes from 22 countries in the region, the Egyptian research centers appear to be among the highest performing institutes in the region across most metrics, with the National Research Center, NRC, ranked as the strongest of the pack. Rankings are based on three major criteria, research, innovation and society, some 40% of S. Climago's ranking model comes from research performance, which track metrics like the quality of publication produced by these centers, the frequency of their output, and the collaboration with the international partners and industrial players. Innovation snaps up another 40% of the ranking and measures of the technical impact of the work based on patent and patent citation. The ranking, the remaining 20% of the whitening looks at the societal metrics, such as web presence and their contribution to the sustainable development goals, breaking things down a little further. Egypt's STEM-focused NRC topped this Climago overall rankings and research score. And with the exception of the top the Qatar Foundation did so by a landslide. NRC was ranked second regionally in the society score, surpassed by the Qatari Foundation and third when it came to innovation outperformed by Saudi Arabia King Abdelaziz City for Science and Technology. And again, the Qatar Foundation. Egyptian institutes generally fared best in innovation, where the country holds 11 of the top 20 slots on the rankings. Despite the country best performing institute ranking third behind Qatar and Saudi Arabia on the same metric, when it came to research, the Egyptian institutes held 10 of the top 20 spots on the Skimago ranking and six of the top 20 slots for their society scores. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our interview with Dr. Zakhari. Doctor, now, we've been talking about how uh, many research centers are being developed and many Egyptian universities are being developed. Now, for many years, we've seen a difference between private universities and Egyptian national universities, but now a new wave of Egyptian national universities that are on par with the private universities. How much of a difference do you feel it will make, not just for the academic student life, but that would spill over to life after graduation for the students with their education, with the environment that they've been exposed to through uh, four or more years of higher education? Let me say that, uh, of course, the building and the nice environment and the clean environment a student finds in his university make him uh, proud of his university. So 
It is very, it's very important that a student enters a clean class, a well-equipped lab, uh, having the bench clean and the laptop or a desktop on his uh, bench and so on. This is very important. This was not the case with the old universities because the old universities had uh, been established for a limited uh, number of students long, long ago. Mm -hmm. So even if they upgrade themselves, they are not at the same level of the uh, private universities. But let me say that now there are many governmental universities that uh, have been established and they are at the same good level of very good uh, building, very good equipment, very good laboratories, uh, very good uh, classes for the student to sit at. Mm -hmm. uh, so this gives confidence for the student and he loves his country, he loves his university, he loves studying in this university. Yes. It's not a matter of only I'm sitting in a nice place, mm -hmm. no. Well, Your Excellency, over the past few years everybody's been concerned with two main sectors the health sector and the educational sector and uh, the Egyptian society views these two sectors as fundamental to the development of the Egyptian society. Now we've seen a lot of changes taking place for those two sectors. Yes. Now how would you rate the change and the development within the educational sector? I mean we've, we've gone through um, a lot as well in those past three years, we've gone through uh, online ele electronic learning, a pandemic, uh, a change in the dynamics of the uh, student-professor uh, relationship and the mediums being used, the tools being used. Do you feel that the educational sector, because students as well, have changed yes. over the past few of course, years of course, yes. and the mentality and the interests have changed because we've been used to um, all the students wanting mainly to focus for instance on medicine and engineering uh, these were the the two top uh, interests for Egyptian students but now everybody's turning their attention to information communication technology uh, electronic engineering uh, artificial intelligence all these things how would you rate the, the refurbishing and the uh, reformation of the educational sector, the higher educational specific. Okay, let me um, say something that even though uh, information technology, electronics and these subjects, people think that they are isolated from mm -hmm. other subjects. No, in medicine, in pharmacy, in uh, veterinary, in engineering, in in language, in anything, we are using these tools. So everything is uh, interrelated yes. and interconnected to each other. Uh, you are asking me about what happened in the education. We were only about 20 universities since less than 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now we are 28 governmental and 28 uh, uh, private universities. So. Uh, the crowdness in the classes has been reduced a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, what is good in the COVID-19 that it learned us to depend on the internet and to depend on uh, the Zoom and so on in studying. So this is, is great. Mm -hmm. uh, the students now know how to make a project through the internet. Mm -hmm. They used to rely on the professor to study what he is saying, the question will come like that, I will uh, reply like that. This is not the case now. Students are learning from the YouTube and learning, of course, from the scientific yes. uh, YouTube, not from every uh, YouTube. Yes. <laughs> they are learning what has been uh, made yesterday in the USA, what mm -hmm. has been made uh, today in Egypt, what has been uh, studying with the sort of diagrams which is very interesting mm -hmm. so this made their mind broader than ours yes Your they can even sorry yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, long ago when we used to make a master or a PhD thesis we used to say that uh, if I will take a reference which have been uh, uh, done the past five years it's a recent reference no now it isn't like that mm -hmm. I can click and know what is 
what have been done yesterday i can click on the internet and know what has been done yesterday mm -hmm. so i'm updating my knowledge and i'm not retarded from the worldwide sciences yes your excellency now you've mentioned that uh, researchers and students are now thinking maybe more outside of the box and uh, everybody is keen on getting international publication and accreditation and recognition now you've mentioned that also the private sector are the main uh, the main beneficiaries mainly or uh, are the ones who um, get to take chances on this on these researchers and try and implement them in their own industry but what about the Egyptian government? I mean, what about the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research? Does it follow up all these uh, publications, uh, this, these researchers, and try and implement them within the public sector, yes. within the governmental institutions and governmental centers in, in all, sort of, uh, all sorts of industry to, and, and maybe even offer a helping hand and uh, accreditation and recognition to these researchers for, for us to, for, for the whole Egyptian society to benefit. Yes, let me say that many, many projects like what is uh, known as Taiko. Taiko is Technology Innovation Commercialization Office. Mm -hmm. It is found in many uh, centers and many institutions, many universities. Uh, an innovation hub also have been pu has been established in many universities. A science park has been published, uh, sorry, established mm -hmm. in many universities. This science park and these innovation hubs and these Taiko offices, their role is to market the mm -hmm. scientific research uh, and to make feasibility study and to connect the scientists with the end user. Yes. So this, that's why we are much more better now in innovation than before. <laughs> yes. Dr. Zakheri, now, this is, uh, this is the time for the youth. And uh, the youth constitute over 67% of the Egyptian population. And there's uh, a big wave that's been going on for years, um, really encouraging the youth to be uh, entrepreneurs, having their own startups, being their own bosses at their own businesses and projects and investments. How does this sort of, um, this sort of way of life and this sort of career change or affect the researcher and the student during their uh, academic life and during their, uh, the, the time they spent in higher education? Does it change the dynamics? Does it change the the nature and the topics even of their research? Do they have a certain goal that is not um, a traditional goal that people have been used to for of course, decades? Of course. The, the, the mind of the yacht now is not as before. They don't like having an, uh, a job sitting on a desk, mm -hmm. writing, uh, making uh, something uh, which is useless, uh, working two hours per day. Yacht don't like that. They want to make entrepreneurs uh, and uh, uh, they want to make uh, startup. Uh, they want to make their own companies. And if they are scientists, they rely on scientific research. And mm -hmm. I met many of them. And uh, let me say that I am a member of the National Council of Women, and I'm uh, the chair of the Scientific Research Committee. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to take from these scientific researchers to give other people mm -hmm. the scientific research or the, um, the innovation done mm -hmm. to make small projects to benefit yes. from it. Mm -hmm. So now it's not the matter of working only on paper and sitting on a desk. No, they are trying to make many startups and make their own companies relying on the scientific research. Mm -hmm. It mustn't be a great industry. Mm -hmm. You know, SMEs is very important for the country. Yes. Well, does it make a, a difference? I mean, now that I mean, y you work in in, in, in the scientific research uh, industry and you're working with women, with the youth and you see the different opportunities. Now, with all the, um, the national initiatives being introduced, with all the different um, platforms being introduced that would try, that could link 
or encourage or incubate some of these ideas and some of these innovations uh, for researchers, uh, uh, startups, entrepreneurs? Does it make does it make it easier for these students and these researchers to find a different way, a new modern way to interconnect with each other and find maybe ways to to get finance through these platforms, through these initiatives that would be adopted in their careers on the ground to, to really have a practical life of these studies? Yes, let me say the first step is going to the Taiko offices, going to the Innovation Hub, going to the Science Park. Then we have many incubators. What is the meaning of incubator here? It's not putting something to grow up. <laughs> it's growing up the entrepreneur that they are doing, growing up their MSEs. Uh, some incubators give money for the youth to start their, or their own uh, business and then after that they leave them. Uh, so there are many opportunities now for the youth to make their own business. Mm -hmm. And now they are very good in marketing their researches because as I told you they mm -hmm. have a subject in the undergraduates, yes. uh, in the undergraduate studies they have a subject for the entrepreneur and how to make feasibility study, how to market the research. Mm -hmm. They are not like, like us. Yeah. <laughs> well, your Excellency, you've been following and monitoring these uh, publications and these uh, researchers. Now, what sort of, which area do you feel that Egyptians have been um, really interested in researching and finding out more about and developing more? Which areas? Are we talking about uh, technological areas, the medical sector? Uh, marketing and business and economic researchers and theories what sort of where, where did you find a leap for Egyptians in terms of research and uh, really big attention and interest in? of course all what you have said is right mm -hmm. all these subjects or all these um, uh, fields are very important but Egypt is uh, good in biotechnology mm -hmm. and it's a very good domain because biotechnology is very important in medicine, engineering, agriculture, in everything, mm -hmm. information technology, uh, electronics, these are the most important things and we have a high rank in our publication but again I don't want only publications, mm -hmm. I want applications. So these uh, domains are applied yes. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And we are very clever in biotechnology, by the way. Yes. <laughs> well, hopefully that would even spill over for a green environment and a green economy yes. and climate change yes. as well, which is yes. the, a, a big interest for not just Egypt, but the whole for world, the world as, as well. well yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Zakheri has mentioned, it is great to achieve this sort of recognition to go up in the world rankings in terms of scientific research and universities as well but the main thing is really implementing them on the ground to really benefit from these results and these publications and these researches, not just for those Egyptian students and researchers, but for the whole of the Egyptian society. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of The Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my very distinguished guest, Dr. Nadia Zakheri, the former Minister of Scientific Research, Dr. Zakheri, it was a pleasure having you with it us. It was on the my show. pleasure and Happy New Year for everybody. Happy New Year, Doctor. <laughs> Ladies you. and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Henny Safe. Thank you for joining us.